All right. So welcome to today's library workshop. We're going to be talking about subject specific databases and effective keywords. My name is Carissa Powell. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a student success librarian. And I work mostly with first year composition students like English 101, 102. And you can email me at carissa at utk.edu. Um, and my name is Brianne Dosh. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm a subject librarian, which means I specialize in a specific subject. And my subject is psychology. I also help with social sciences, data-related questions. Um, I'm excited to deep dive with you guys today. And you can email me at bdosh at utk.edu. All right, so just to make sure everyone's on the same page, we are going to be finding and using subject specific databases today. Everyone's gonna learn how to contact your subject librarian. And then we're gonna also be talking about how to use keywords and synonyms when you're looking for articles and things to back up your research. So we wanted to first start out with just some definitions to make sure everyone is on the same page. Uh, when I say database, I'm talking about a collection of resources. Um, these could be full text, citations, abstracts. Um, and then if you have heard any of these words or hear them in the future, like academic search complete, psych info, web of science, those are all databases. And then when we're talking about keywords, we're talking about specific words that represent the main concept in your research topic. Um, and it's typically the most important concepts within your research question. So I have a few examples here in just a moment, but we also wanted to define synonyms. So if we're asking you to come up with a synonym of your keyword, we're asking you to Think of another word that could also be used to describe your keyword and that can just help broaden some of the search results you're getting and so we just wanted to start off with some of those definitions so we're going to do a little activity in just a little bit to help folks brainstorm their own keywords but if you ever get stuck i wanted to highlight a few things that I personally find really helpful if I'm having a hard time. Uh, one of them is Credo Reference, which I'll show in a moment. But another is that sometimes I will just Google the word and then synonym to try and find something. Uh, thesauruses are really helpful for that as well. And you can always ask a librarian. So you can reach out to me, we'll show you make sure folks know how to get help after today. One specific tool you can use, which Grace just put in chat, is Credo Reference. And this is one of my favorite tools if you're just briefly exploring a topic, maybe you don't have a full-fledged research question yet, this can be a great place to just kind of brainstorm and get some ideas. And so if you look at the little word cloud thing over here. Uh, like maybe I'm researching mental health, but I'm not sure where else to go from there. Um, maybe I'm interested in psychology and schizophrenia. So you can kind of like, once you're in this tool, you can click through these and kind of explore further. So Grace put the link to that in chat. You do have to log in with your NetID and password if you're off campus, but this is a really amazing tool. Highly recommend. So just taking a quick poll in chat, how many people have heard of Boolean operators before? Yes, no, kind of, not sure, so I've got a no, I've got some no's. Okay, I've got one, one solo yes, two yeses. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of no's. So we're going to go over it. And if you have heard of it, 
kudos. Um, so if we're pretending that my research question is something along the lines of looking into college students and mental health, this is gonna be really helpful when you get into actually searching. Our AND operator is combining. So if I wanted to make sure an article had both mental health and college students, I would use the AND operator. And so if you're a visual learner, you can look over here. Um, you, this would be the articles that have both of those. If I was looking into either or, like if it was about mental health or college students, I'm just interested, going to see what's out there, want a, a really broad search, I can do that. And the not operator is if maybe I was getting a ton of search results about high school students and I was like, oh, I really, really just want to focus on college, tired of getting high school students in my search results, you can kick that out with not. So those are your Boolean operators. It's basically just a language you can use to speak to the search engine. Okay, and then Brianne is also gonna like show all of these things. So this is just kind of like a little preview. Um, this is what some search strings could look like. So before here you have like the visual representation of that would look like. If you're actually in a database, in a search engine, it could look like any of these. So mental health and college students, we can add stress onto that. Uh, we can use some of our synonyms here. So education or college students, and now we're adding on anxiety. So I definitely recommend kind of starting on more of a broad side of things, but then as you want to whittle down your search results, you can add more and more keywords. All right. We're gonna do a quick practice round. So Grace will be putting in a link to Padlet in chat. And if you click there, you should get to a screen that looks like this. So we would love to hear from you what your research question or topic is. Like again, we're pretending that mine was mental health and college students. And then you can list out some of your keywords over here. And the nice thing about this is that you can comment on someone else's. And you know, if you're having a hard time thinking of some keywords or synonyms, someone else can comment on yours. So I'm going to give everyone about one minute to work on that. I'm going to set a timer and take your time. Again, you're going to be commenting your research question over here and then your keywords over here. So it kind of looks like that. All right, so we've got some different topics going on over here. For anyone who just joined, I'm going to re-put the link 
to Padlet in chat. And again, um, we're commenting our research question or our keywords. So we've got some folks who are interested in history misinterpretation. Um, ooh, greatest writers in English history, how genetics impact history. Uh, we've got, let's see, best ways to study. And then over here, some folks are interested in either like royal bloodline slash family. Um, and like, oh, I, I forgot I could move cards. Um, so maybe if this person, I almost wish I could like match these together, but if someone's looking into greatest writers in English history, maybe they're also looking for some of these keywords. Brianne, any, anything standing out to you from this? Um, what I love is what I'm seeing is um, you have a question and you realize like I can't just throw like choose a subject in history um, that's been misinterpreted and throw that into a database or, or even Google right like it's helpful to um, or you can throw that into Google but you have to learn how to take that into the keyword um, demonstrations you were showing and make it speak to the database. So I love seeing where people's brains are or like best types of studying what what if you're a visual learner, right? Kind of connecting those two, those two things, that line of how do I take my common sense language and make the database understand it. So I think we have a, a group of smarty pants in here. I love it. And I know that we're we're doing this for this workshop, but this is something I do on my own before I get started on a topic. And I just find if you ever run into a wall or you're kind of like losing steam on your research process, it can kind of be nice to come back to this and uh, kind of like ground yourself back in what you were originally looking into. All right. So we are going to do something else. Um, we would love to hear from folks where they go to deep dive on a topic. So you can scan the QR code on this page or go to slido.com. And I'm going to put the numbers in chat. And what I... Um... The way I like to think about deep diving is I like to think about where do I go when I've decided I want to become an expert on a topic, whether it's I disagree with my friend at lunch and I need to prove them right or wrong. Um, or when I need to learn about something that I'm curious about, like where do you go when um, you want to get subject specific or deep dive on something. Google is one of my number one. Wikipedia, I love that somebody said Wikipedia, Google Scholar, Internet ProQuest, I'm seeing some really promising responses. Ooh, Wikipedia sources. Oh, that's a really, that's a really great one. BuzzFeed, going to some news articles. Sometimes BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed's lists make me feel like I'm an expert afterwards of like, wow, I did not know about that 90s trend that has made a comeback. You know, these are all these are all fantastic. I love that you guys mentioned Google Scholar versus Wikipedia versus scrolling down to the bottom of a Wikipedia off, off, um, article and clicking on the sources. These are all really great examples of a really good place to start when you want to deep dive on a topic. Um, oh, YouTube also. There is so many good YouTube academies and other things, but the internet. It's kind of endless for where we can start finding resources to make us experts on a specific topic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to use library resources to deep dive and get subject specific on a topic. And I'm actually going to use the keywords that Carissa 
demonstrated earlier today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So here we are. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through my process when I'm going to get subject specific on something. And then I'll kind of go backwards and show you resources that I might have glossed over um, or other kind of key points on the library website for getting subject specific. So here I am on the library homepage, which is lib.utk.edu. You can also just Google UTK library um, and it will will be the first ones that come up. So I'm going to go ahead and go to OneSearch, which is one of our big discovery portals to research on the in the library. And I'm going to search mental health and college students. And I'm going to see what I get. All right, so I got over half a million results. I'm getting books and ebooks. I'm seeing a lot on my topic, but mental health, when I'm thinking about it, I see everything that I'm getting. It is kind of a broad, a broad topic, mental health. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Google types of mental health problems because I think I'm curious about what type of mental health problems college students might have. And this is what I love about some of the updates in Google over the recent years is it gives you these really help it's helpful snippets. So this is from one of the first results where it starts listening, listing different mental health disorders. Um, this tells me like mental illness, mental health problems, mental disorder. I may not have thought of using the word mental disorder, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first result and see what I can learn from it. And so this is kind of that beginning part when you wanna deep dive, I'm gonna familiarize myself on the topic. And so Google is a really good place to start. Um, this looks like a pretty interesting resource. It's from um, an Australian government agency, actually. Um, but it looks like it lists these different types of mental health issues. And so I'm scanning through it, I'm scanning through it. And I think I'm interested in what one search would have to say about depression in college students. I wonder if that would change my search at all. So I'm going to go back to my search. I'm going to take away mental health and type in depression in college students. Gonna press search. Okay, it took down my results by a couple hundred thousand, which is pretty significant, but there's still a lot to get through here. Important things to note about OneSearch quickly before um, I take you to some databases is you can quickly use the filters on the side to find more of a format that you're looking for. Whether you are looking just for articles or just for print books, I like to click this peer reviewed journals filter if I'm knowing I'm going to be looking for a peer reviewed journal article type thing. Um, but I think I would actually like to go to where Carissa was talking about with credo reference and I want to look at what I can learn, like what subject should I be looking in to maybe go find the more precision tool of a database. So I'm gonna search mental health in Credo Reference. And what I really like about Credo Reference is that it um, lets you kind of know what bigger topics it might be in because sometimes you might have a research topic and you're really not sure what bigger discipline it fits in. I know mental health and psychology might make more sense um, logically, but I can come here and I can see, okay, psychology, psychiatry, I could click around a little bit, but I think I want to go back to the library and figure out if they have any databases specifically for psychology. So I'm going to go back to, the, to OneSearch. I'm going to click on our header to go back to the library's homepage. And I'm going to come up and click on databases right here. So I know that databases might be that more subject specific. So I can scroll through and see, wow, they have links to a lot of different subjects. So I'm going to scroll and see what I'm looking for. I'm going to click on psychology. Oh, and look, there is a subject librarian that I can get in contact with 
for this topic. That's really great to know. And also, this subject librarian has suggested that this is my best bet for psychological research. So I'm going to click on it. And look, it takes me to something that looks a lot like OneSearch. So I'm going to do my same search that I was doing in OneSearch, and I'm going to do depression. I'm going to use that Boolean operator and college students. And I'm going to see what my results look like. So I still have 11,000 results, which lets me know I might be able to even get more specific, but it's not half a million results. I can really tell that I am getting more subject specific and already glancing these journal articles tend to be more on what I was looking for. And so I can click and open like depression and COVID-19, what an interesting timely topic to look at. Um, and I can come here and I can scan the abstract, I can look at the different subject headings, and I can follow the power T to click find text to get that full text PDF for me. I can click on article link. And here I am, I can read the full text online or I can download it. And that was kind of a fast way that I decided to get subject specific to deep dive on something starting with an idea I had Google using a tool like Credo Reference. And so to go over some things, here I am on the library homepage. And if you are interested in learning who the library has that as an expert on a different subject or what we have available on a specific subject, I recommend coming over to where I spent a lot of my time and clicking on this databases tool. What I really like about this page is it does give you some of your best bets in general, some of our most popular databases, kind of more interdisciplinary databases like Web of Science. But no matter where you are, if you've declared a major or not, or you know who your subject librarian is or not, you can open one of these databases, uh, these subjects within the database list, and you can see what your best bets are and where your subject library is, librarian is and how to get in contact with them. Um, so essentially, I just wanted to share that you can get deep on a, on a topic using the library website, using Google, using other tools and making sure you find that subject specific database. So with that, um, Carissa, do you have anything to add? Oh, you're muted. No, yep, so close. <laughs> um no um thank you so much we are gonna put a link to the end of workshop survey in chat if you need proof of attendance from your professor for being here today that will be the last step in the survey and if you're not here for proof of attendance we would also love to hear from you anyways um and then the next week's workshops are going to be on Tuesday, September 7th at 11 a.m. talking about uh, research and writing. And then on Wednesday, September 8th at 2 p.m. is how to write a research question. So we are going to stop the recording and then take questions. <laughs>